Awesome, great, okay. So, guys, cut the dick jokes. Uh, this is gonna be a clean show. Uh, yeah, so we got... Yeah! Boo! Alright, well... Fuck you guys. Yeah. You happy? Alright, um, we've got an awesome lineup tonight. It's gonna be a super cool show. Uh, I'm Keith Newman, I'm gonna be warming you guys up, and then we're gonna get the show on the road. So... Yeah. Woo! Woo! Uh, also, you guys have the worst seats in the house, so <laughs> congrats. Uh, so, one thing that I've noticed is that, uh, like, with my generation, the really cool thing nowadays is to, like, reminisce about the 90s. You know, yeah. everyone, yeah, some people grew up in the 90s, most people here grew up in the 90s. And we're just like, yeah, like, the TV shows, the toys, the games, everything was just better then, and it's just been this downhill slope since then. <laughs> but, like, the more I've looked back on it, like, there's some really messed up things that we did in the 90s. Like, just take a moment and remember that Furbies happened. <laughs> you know, like, the little, like, pseudo, like, intellectual robot creatures that have, like, a strange resemblance to the creatures that eat people from the gremlins. <laughs> and then last year, they tried to do this 2012 revival of the Furby, which is a terrible idea, because everyone who originally had a Furby is now old enough to warn people not to buy them. <laughs> And then we had the game Candyland, yeah. which was the children's board game that required zero skill. Yeah. There was no dice, no spinner, you just pulled the card and went to whatever space you wanted to go to. Um, but luckily, the five-year-old mind of mine figured out that you could cheat by just making sure you get Queen Frostine on the first turn, yeah. and you could win the game in three turns. Mm -hmm. Which, like, in retrospect, is kind of a win-win scenario, because, like, as a parent, I wouldn't want to have to sit through a full game of Candyland. <laughs> It'd be like having, being at the worst magic show of all time. It's like, is this the card that will end your suffering? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and I also, I had this game called Alligator Dentist. I don't know if people remember that. Uh, it, you have this like, little green toy contraption, you open its mouth, and then you just pull its teeth out with a pair of pliers. <laughs> And then, like, if you didn't do it fast enough, or if you pulled out the wrong tooth, it would, like, chomp down and bite your hand. <laughs> and rightfully so. Like, that's not a dental procedure. That's just pulling teeth with pliers out of an alligator's mouth. <laughs> but, like, as ridiculous as all those games were, I would have loved to be at one of those meetings where, like, the games were being rejected. <laughs> like, I would have loved to see that game where they're just like, you know, Dave, we thought your idea was really creative. We just think the kids might find it a little bit too confusing. So we're gonna go for that one instead where the elephant shoots butterflies out of its trunk. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I will say is that I think things were like a lot simpler and like easier to handle back before we had smartphones, before we had the internet and computers. Like, do you wanna know how my mom and my dad met? My mom's friend just showed her a picture of a softball team and she said, oh, he looks cute. The end. <laughs> That's the story. Like, if that happened now, it would be like, Oh, he looks cute, but he tweets like 17 times a day? And why does he take so many selfies? Like, is he really a self-absorbed asshole, or is he just being ironic? <sighs> uh, and there's been this big craze nowadays for these like iPhone, smartphone dating apps. And like the big one now is called Tinder. And some people know about Tinder. <laughs> the, for those of you who don't know, the way that Tinder works is you see like a few pictures of someone, and then based on Facebook, you see like your mutual interests and mutual friends. Um, and then you just vote like yes or no, and that's it. <laughs> Which is like arguably one of the most shallow dating experiences ever. <laughs> but I say arguably because I found one that's shallower, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's called Lulu. Uh, these people are about Lulu. The way that Lulu works, um, there's a different version for guys and for girls, which is already off to a great start. Uh, the girls' version, they, it links to their Facebook account, they get all their male Facebook friends, and then they just rate their hotness and can write comments that other girls can see. And if you're thinking like, okay, so then like the guy version is that guys go on and rate like their female friends, you would be wrong. Because that would make sense. The guys literally, they can log on and then they just can see their hotness rating and like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> they do have, there's like, a, there's like a profile that you can edit, and you have like three things. You have like, a, like about me, turn-ons, and turn-offs. 
but you don't get to write your own things. You like choose between these preset hashtags that they write for you, and they're all incredible. <laughs> like for about me, you have things like hashtag cheaper than a Big Mac, <laughs> hashtag wears Crocs, and hashtag handyman dot dot dot. Why is there an ellipsis there? <laughs> You were this close to having like a really nice, simple, positive thing. If you just stopped two periods ago, you'd be great. But now you're like morphed it into this weird like euphemism about guys who were just like not satisfied with a kiss on the first date. I don't know. Yeah. And for turn-ons, you have things like hashtag killer bod. And then hashtag mom's a milf. <laughs> Which doesn't make sense for a number of reasons. <laughs> if the mom's a milf, why aren't you just interested in the mom? Mm -hmm. And like, this is what you're showing to the girls. Like, what girl's gonna look at it and just be like, yeah, I guess my mom is a milf. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also have my personal favorite, hashtag smells like cookies. <laughs> Not that she makes you cookies, just that she perpetually smells like she's making them for some other dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, for turnoffs, they have hashtag stage five cleaner, which is a term that I'd never heard before, so I had to look it up. And for those of you who don't know, the definition of a stage five clinger is when you're interested in someone, but you don't realize that they're not interested in you. So like, how, that doesn't make any sense. You can't self-identify as something where you don't know that you are this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, for whatever reason, at this point I just stopped questioning the app. For a turnoff, they have hashtag fart machine. <laughs> Which I, I don't know what girl in her right mind would like self-identify as a hashtag fart machine. <laughs> but if she exists, I would love to meet her. <laughs> like, I'd love to see this girl at a job interview, and they're just like, yeah, um, obviously you were, you were great, you were really com calm and composed in the interview, and you know, your internships were a plus, but under personal experiences, someone just said I'm funny. I'll talk to you after the show. She looks and it says, uh, under your personal experiences, it says you're a hashtag fart machine. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, and that's just like a symptom of our generation, is that we have to turn everything into a hashtag. Like I have this friend who a few weeks ago, she uploaded this photo of a quilt to Facebook. And the caption just said, quilt. Another gift from hashtag mom. <laughs> no! You don't get to do that! Mom is just mom! And then like Twitter has taken over this idea where like hashtag is just like the punchline of your joke. So people, they'll be tweeting things like, making palindromes, hashtag ways dyslexic people can cheat. <laughs> uh, a thinker. Um, but, what I really want to do is I want to have, I want to find one of these girls, like one of these girls who's really into hashtags, and I want to have my friend introduce me to her. And then like I'll see her, and you know, we'll be like, oh well, she's pretty attractive, I'm pretty attractive, let's go on a date. Date goes well, we go on like a second date, a third date, you know, things start getting a little bit more serious. But you know, we're, we're falling in love. So like by the end of the senior year, we graduate, we move off to like New York City or Chicago, you know, one of the big like urban centers. Um, and then like a few years pass, and eventually like we moved in together. So like a few more years passed, and we're like, it's been five years, and we're living together, like, we're basically married, we should probably just do it officially. So then we spend the next seven months just planning this like, super elaborate wedding, and we're just pulling out all the stops, and you get to the wedding, and it's just all of our friends and families and loved ones are there, and we get up to the front, and there's like the priest, or the rabbi, or like government officiator person, <laughs> and he turns to the girl and he says, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? And she says, I do. And he turns to me, and he says, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? And I say, no. And then just everyone starts freaking out, and this hush falls over the crowd, because they see she's just like in tears, and she doesn't know what's going on, and she looks at me, and she says, Why? Like, what happened? What did I do? Why? And I just lean in real close, and I whisper in her ear, I only liked you, because your hashtag mom's a milk. <laughs> Thank you guys, that's my set.